All right, this is my video response to the question on whether or not a Christian um, can be, or excuse me, rather a homosexual, whether a homosexual can be a Christian, and um, if so, are they hypocrites? Absolutely not. Um, there is nowhere in the Bible that distinctively, in context, talks about what we know today as same gender affection. None. Now, some of you are going to quote Leviticus 18, I believe it's 22, where it says, if a man lie with a woman, um, a, lamb, a man lie with a man, excuse me, and he lie with a woman, it's an abomination. However, if you read a little bit further, it also says that shellfish are an abomination. It also says that pork is an abomination. It also says that if a woman is married and on her wedding day is not a virgin, she should be stoned to death. Neither of those things that we do. The Bible also gives you in Leviticus the authority to sell your children as slaves. If they are disobedient, they are to be stoned. We don't do that either. However, when it comes to the topic of homosexuality, this is the one we want to hold on to. And this is the one, the one we want to impose and be, uh, you know, and stand firm in. I think it's ridiculous. Um, when you go over to the New Testament and you talk about um, what Paul said about the subject, he used the words artistinocoites and he used the word pederasty. Pederasty is where we derive the term pedophile. Pedophile, we know what that means. It's when an older person takes advantage of a youth um, in a sexual way. Um, and the word arsenicoites is referring strictly to temple prostitution. Neither of those things are what we're talking about here. We're talking about two consenting adults who share a common interest in each other. Um, we jump over the idea that David and Jonathan had a strong connection. Some say, oh, they were just best friends. But no, if you read the text a little closer, anytime a man says that he had love for, that uh, Jonathan had loved him and he had loved Jonathan more than the love of any woman, that's a strong statement. Uh, we, we look over the fact that Ruth and Naomi had a very strong relationship. These things I can go into great detail about, but I'm not because the author of the video said he didn't want a lot of verses and so forth because he can read them himself. But these are things that we need to look into um, that we don't discuss. Jesus never mentioned sexuality. He said, he was asked the question, what are the greatest commandments? He said, love the Lord your God all your heart, on all your mind and soul. Treat your neighbor as yourself, and on these two things are hanging the law and the prophets. These two things are the greatest commandments. So if he felt like that this was a big issue, I'm quite sure he had plenty of opportunity to mention it one time. Since when did Paul become more authoritative than Jesus? You know what I mean? So, I mean, you we can't pick and choose uh, where we want to hold on to and where we want to let go. If you really want to uh, follow the Bible, you shouldn't get divorces. That's a threat to marriage. You should not get a divorce. But you get divorces when you feel like it all the time. I think people like Donna McClurkin, T.D. Jakes, uh, they do the gay community a great disservice. I know plenty of ministers and bishops and apostles. They lay hands. They, they, they speak in all kinds of strange tongues and do everything else, but are closeted. If the, especially in the black community, if the black community weren't such homophobes, you wouldn't have so many DL men bringing home stuff to their wives. They only got married because they thought it was going to make them straight because the church said that's what they should do. Or they went to so many deliverance services and rolled on the floor and vomited 12 times and woke up, they felt lightheaded for a week. And then after the week was over, they still were gay. But they said, okay, well, maybe if I get married, uh, maybe I'll change, and they found out that it didn't change, but by that time they had already had, well, they knew they didn't change from the beginning, but they let themselves continue, they let themselves have sex, they let themselves have children, and now they're locked into a relationship, so what they do? They want to go on the DL because they can't be themselves. That's ridiculous. If you if your mind changed and you were to study, because, I mean, what happened to studying to show yourself approved? A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You don't study. You just hear what the preacher say across the pulpit and you run with it. Or, because that's what you've been taught, you believe it. Everything you were taught is not true. How can you have such faith in our English translation of the Bible 
you need to unless you know the Hebrew or the Greek and it can read and dissect it in that context, you're really not going to have a full understanding of what the scripture says. Um, we the pro and also we don't want to we never want to integrate science with religion and so forth, but it's kind of hard not to. Because if we kept religion and never incorporated science, we would still think the earth was flat. You know, the Bible doesn't talk about dinosaurs, but that don't mean they didn't exist. And, you know, if and you got to think about the culture of the people. In that culture, people got married. They had multiple wives. Marriage has changed. They have many. Solomon had 400 concubines. David had multiple women. Abraham slept with Hagar by his wife's permission, and they didn't call it adultery, and nor did God smite him and punish him. None of these things happened. But in today's society, we developed some ultra-conservative view. I don't know where it came from, but it came from some uneducated preacher who thought he, what he read was right, and it spread, and now everyone has this uh, uh, misinterpretation of God. And you have young people killing themselves because they can't reconcile their sexuality with their religion. And it's ridiculous. If you want to be, if you are a homosexual and you feel as though your faith is Christianity and that's what you believe, then so be it. Fine. Jesus loves you. He didn't condemn you. And neither should anybody else condemn you. And just like the woman at the, who uh, had the, uh, who was caught in the act of adultery, uh, the law said stone her. They came to Jesus. Jesus said, let him who was out sin cast the first stone. Now, let me clarify myself. Let me get this straight. I do not believe homosexuality is a sin. Don't get it twisted. I don't believe it's a sin, and I'm living just fine, and I don't think it's a sin at all. I'm happy in my relationship. I believe that God blessed me to be with my uh, fiance for over two years now, and we're doing just fine. I'm blessed, and, I'm, and things are great. So I do not think homosexuality is a sin at all, period. But for those of you that do, if you want to compare sins, the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, she was considered a sinner. She was supposed to be stoned. Jesus said, let him who without sin cast the first stone. Everybody had to drop their stones and walk away. So if Jesus had compassion and Jesus didn't pick it, Jesus didn't have a rally, Jesus didn't get signs and say, oh, kill the adulterers. Oh, God hates fags. Fags are going to hell. Jesus didn't do it. So why are you doing it? What makes you better than him? What you need to do all of you all, if you're not gay, you will never understand. I don't understand how it is to be straight, nor will you understand what it is to be gay. So therefore, what you need to do is keep just worry about your own soul salvation, get that right with God, and leave everybody else alone. Mind your business, help God to keep yours straight, and then you know everybody. And then in time, hopefully, God will bring us together. Now, if you want more detail. Before I end this uh, little video uh, session, if you need more, if you would like to ask me questions, if you have comments or concerns about the right context of some of these verses, I'd be glad to go into detail with you. Um, this is something I struggled with for a long time. I'm 24 years old. I was raised in the Pentecostal Apostolic Church. And of course, those of you that come from that background know that the rules and regulations, the bylaws were very hard. Um, so I was raised in that. And it took me some years to be comfortable with my own skin, but through research and studying, I come to find out that God loves me just the way I am, and he does not want me to change. So if you have questions, comments, concerns, if you want to understand Romans better, if you want to understand Leviticus better, if you want to understand why I feel so free and being who I am and not afraid of waking up in, or, or afraid of waking up in hell and all this other nonsense, if you want to know why, feel free to ask. I'll be glad to tell you. You can call all scriptures all day long. But I guarantee when you quote it, you'll be taken out of context. And I encourage you to go to your local library. I encourage you to research it in Hebrew and in Greek. I encourage you to uh, take a look at things from a non-biased perspective. And I guarantee you'll come out with a better understanding.